war. It's been around as long as humankind. But with each battle, the game and players change. Today's enemy uses different weapons, different tactics, new ways to kill. Tonight on Truth, Duty, Valor, Army reservists from Eastern Canada get their first dose of modern conflict. They fight in urban areas. They look for the enemy, hidden in a crowd of innocent people. They train for a new kind of war. The concept of a civilian fighting force dates back to the 1800s. They use farm tools as weapons. They organize themselves into security groups. They protect their families and communities from outside threats. Over the decades, they maintain their full-time jobs but they train regularly. They become strong and skilled. They fill in the gaps when the military is in demand. They are a valuable asset to a country at war. Today, civilian soldiers are still an important part of the military. Together, they form a massive fighting force. They are known as the Reserves. Urban Ops takes place in a demanding, hazardous, dangerous battle space, all right? There are 18,000 reservist soldiers in the Canadian forces from all across the country. Students, doctors, construction workers, business people, homemakers. They come from all backgrounds, but they live two lives. They are also soldiers who train to fight. Reservists strengthen the regular forces. They go on missions. They can fill any rank. A private in Bosnia, a warrant officer in Somalia, a major in Canada. Whether serving overseas or protecting their homeland, Reservists rise to the challenge. Right now, the biggest challenge for the military is Afghanistan. It's a demanding mission. It requires nearly 2,500 fresh troops every six months. Soldiers are under a lot of pressure. Right now, there are over 360 reservists in Afghanistan. Once again, the part-time soldiers step up and fill in the gaps. All soldiers who deploy overseas go through the same training, but it takes longer to prepare for war when soldiering isn't your full-time job. In the regular forces, you spend all your time with your comrades, either training or on missions. To get that kind of camaraderie and teamwork, the military puts together massive exercises every year for reservists. It's a chance for reservists to practice skills they'll learn all year and see how they fit into the larger picture. The annual exercise for Army reservists in Eastern Canada is called ARCON. It's one week of intense training for over 1,200 soldiers. Colonel Tony Stack is the brigade commander for this year's exercise. 
Archon is simply the area concentration. So it's the one single premier training event, collective training event for Atlantic Region. All year long, the soldiers have been involved in individual training, individual skills at the unit level. And this is a, an opportunity now to bring the engineers, the infantry, the artillery, the, the service support, all of that together for one collective exercise where they integrate and, uh, and train together. Archon is hosted by Canadian Forces Base Gagetown, located in New Brunswick. The exercise takes place all over the province. The variety of landscape makes the training more realistic. Gagetown is a wonderful training area. It's a fantastic opportunity, but it's in the woods and it, and it doesn't reflect where our forces are engaging today in operations. So this is varied terrain. I'm not trying to say that St. John is like Kandahar. It's not, but it's an urban environment. It's a different environment, and it's a place where you can introduce new challenges to the soldiers, things that they might experience in a theater of operations. The soldiers training at Archon are not on the next rotation to Afghanistan. Most have barely broken in their boots. These people here are getting the exposure to the types of realities that are in a modern conflict arena, and uh, we're hoping to introduce them to what that's like. So this is the first stage in that development. They'll do subsequent training at the units and progress through, and someday, in, in subsequent years, they would be in a position to deploy. The way wars are fought has changed. The era of digging trenches and fighting over long fields has passed. In today's wars, soldiers face a wide variety of conflicts. What we're really hoping for is that people tell the truth. They fight unconventional forces who hide among the innocent. Oh, the tasks have changed uh, immensely. You are dealing now with a, a very complex environment in which you have you're mixed with the population, you have hostages, you have belligerents that don't identify themselves clearly as military, uh, you have this intermingled with uh, uh, regular civilian population and traffic, so it's, it's very complex terrain, and that's the type of thing that we're, we're introducing. Reservist exercises like Archon get more realistic every year. The scenarios are based on lessons learned overseas. It's important for the part-time soldiers to get a taste of modern conflict. On the battlefield, there's little room for error. It's a busy week for reservist soldiers in Eastern Canada. Large military exercises are costly, so a lot is packed into each day. The exercise takes place in a fictional war-torn country called Brosnak. It's a failed nation in a state of chaos, and it's crawling with enemy forces. The soldiers are there to restore peace. They have one week to remove the insurgents. For large annual exercises, the training week is often broken up into two parts. For the first half, soldiers practice their weapons in a safe environment with real bullets. They train to hit a target on the move and hit it well. The rest of the week, the soldiers work on their people skills, like how to spot a suicide bomber, how to manage a protest outside your gate, and how to beat the enemy in a full-out battle. <laughs> to make the training more realistic, some troops act out roles. They play civilians, belligerents, and the enemy. Their job is to help the soldiers train for the unexpected. This year, the opposition forces are played by 4th Air Defence Regiment based in Gagetown and a group of Canadian Rangers from Eastern Canada. Their job is to surprise as many soldiers as possible. They take their job seriously.
It's early morning near downtown Fredericton. New soldiers guard the entrance to a makeshift compound. The game is fresh. The young sentries don't know what to expect. They keep an eye out for anything strange. The two rangers are with the enemy. Their job is to spy, gather information, and not get caught. Tourists don't flock to war-torn countries. If there's someone sneaking around your compound taking pictures, it's probably the enemy. Trying to get pictures. Trying to get pictures, see what kind of force they got there. See how many they got, how many rifles they got, how many guards they got, how many people there is in the compound. If we see they're weak enough, if they're armed weak enough, and whatever, maybe we can overcome them. I guess we don't want them in our country. They want to be seen. Let the soldiers know they are being watched. They want to build fear. Go, 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 go. Excuse me, man, what are you doing? Their plan works. The soldiers are on high alert. But now, they are at risk of getting right caught. Right there. That. What's the run on them? There it is. Center of Earth. Walk right in front of us. Right in front of us. The enemy escapes with their pictures. Mission accomplished. The soldiers are now on edge. This is only the beginning. There's something to come. <laughs> Everything is escalating to a certain point. So the more training we give these men before they go over, the hopefully the better prepared they are. Okay. The enemy forces waste no time. They plan their next attack and turn up the heat. <laughs> the scenarios for the exercise are based on real incidents. Lessons from the front line in Afghanistan. Lessons that could save lives. This morning, some young reservists get their first lesson of the day, vigilance. Suicide bombers are the cause of many deaths in war-torn countries. They're hard to spot. They blend in with civilians. And they're willing to trade their life for yours without warning. Before helping the injured, the soldiers secure the scene. Sometimes insurgents plan a second attack. Help me. Help me. And kill people who stop to help. And you're no good to anyone if you're injured or dead. Yeah, we got some. Oh my god, dude. She's having problem breathing. Okay, get up. I just went blank. It was a surprise. I didn't expect it. And I just did what I was supposed to do, tried to at least. I was like, wow, like, what do I do? Okay, there's someone down laying on the ground right there. Do I do my first aid? Am I going to do this? Well, you know what I mean? I was nervous because it was the first time, but then I was just like, all right, just remember your ABCs and everything that you've learned from the beginning, and you just go with it because they train you so well, right? That it just kicks in. It's not even like you think about it. It's not like, okay, I gotta go to this person and look at him. Uh, da, da, da. It's just like, boom. It's just, 
like you're doing it. And then you look at yourself five minutes into it, you're like, wow, I didn't even think about doing this. It's almost like a second nature. Hey, Phil. <laughs> Every soldier knows combat first aid, and medical personnel are always embedded with the infantry. It's essential. Battles guarantee casualties. They got an ID card on the Experienced soldiers observe each incident. Did you see what happened? There's an explosion. <laughs> Afterwards, they give the soldiers valuable feedback. You guys, first aiders over by the uh, side of the building. It gives the part-time soldiers a chance to talk about what just happened in a relaxed setting. It's called an after-action review. How many people responded? Do you know? I wasn't quite sure. I was more worried about the injured, the casualties, and the surrounding area. Lots going through your brain? Lots. Many, many questions? Many questions. All of them priority ones? Yes. And you're trying to figure out which one of the priority ones to do first, exactly. right? Exactly. Welcome to the human race. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The soldiers at the pointy end of the stick are the ones who guard the entry to a base. They are called sentries. They are the first to see trouble. They are often new soldiers. This is my first exercise. I got into the military about three months ago. What we do is we protect the bigger people, right? Like uh, the higher ranks. So we're out. Well, even there is some higher ranks out with us, but it's mainly uh, the lower ranks do sentry to protect the higher ranks and for them to do what their job is. So it's not. It's I guess it's more dangerous, but there's always that fence. You know what I mean? You got. You can always get behind the fence if you need to. So far, this has been the best summer of my life. I'm not even saying that. Like. It's been the best, but the worst, if you understand what I'm saying with that. Um, early mornings, late nights. They don't know what's coming next. They just know to be alert, keep an eye on the surroundings, and trust no one. Especially not these guys. When you're in a military compound in a strange country, people often gather at your gate Sometimes out of curiosity, sometimes out of thirst or hunger, sometimes to kill you, you never know which. The actors play thirsty locals in a war-torn country. They seem harmless, but the soldiers are watchful. Often, the enemy uses innocent people to get in close. They wait until the soldiers are distracted and make their move. The enemy lurks behind the compound. They hope to cut open the fence without being caught. The soldiers spot them and avoid potential chaos. They got lucky this time. I tell Sergeant Drake next time, yeah. we're going in. When occupying urban areas, soldiers interact with local people every day. They are taught how to defuse a situation with words instead of bullets. Back in Canada, reservist soldiers practice negotiation skills. They are challenged by people playing thirsty locals in a conflicted country. I'm looking for a spokesman for your group. Do you have one? The soldiers are friendly, but careful. In reality, one of the protesters could be hiding a grenade or wearing a bomb. The protesters add some aggression. They are relentless. They test the soldiers to see how they react. The soldiers keep their cool in the midst of chaos. It's the right thing to do. Well, 
protest. I guess it was just a bunch of angry warlords that came in and were, were upset at us over something, so, you know, we got to be prepared for that stuff. They were pulling on the fence a lot, so we kind of had to keep that up and following them around. They walked around the whole gate about three times. It wasn't really that intense, but, you know, you got to be prepared in case it did step up. That's what I thought. Come on, man. Obviously, from the looks of you, you're healthy. And our water is still sitting over there. Why haven't I got any water? The soldiers seem to have it all under control, but a protest can take a nasty turn at any time. We have more people poking out instead of old cousins. The enemy makes a second attempt at cutting the fence. This time, it's a success. They could be doing anything, like uh, it's what, something that goes on. You don't know what's coming. Uh, it's just a surprise, you know. You can have guys just sitting around at your gate uh, doing nothing, or you can have guys actually pushing on your gate and actually talking to your commander. Anything could happen. I think they've done a real good job. Very, very, uh, very professional. I think. I think with a few more uh, escalations, it'll uh, help get them in shape. Obviously, it's going. You know, obviously, it's going to take a lot because they're juniors. But uh, they're getting the idea. A lot of them were laughing yesterday. Not so many laughing anymore. They're, they're getting more serious about it, which I guess is the aim. Hopefully, the more training we give them here, the better they are over when they get overseas. The, the more gentle we are, the tougher it's going to be for them in the end. So we're trying to reverse that. I guess our main goal is to get everybody back home. Throughout the week, the enemy forces continue to test and taunt the soldiers. The training is valuable. Now, they can see where their skills fit into the larger picture. But it isn't over. Large reservist exercises like Archon end with a bang. Down in St. John, engineers get ready for the final test, Pugsley Wharf. The grand finale of the week-long exercise will take place right here, a raid with lots of soldiers, lots of enemies, and lots of ammunition. The engineers turn the parking lot into an urban battlefield. They build up the area with large sea cans and create places to hide. Captain Jason Reynolds is the troop commander for the engineers. As you can see uh, here, we have four objectives, three groups of sea cans with concertina wire wrapped around them. And the final objective is uh, two huts further down the port. We haven't set up any booby traps or anything like that. Uh, the only surprise that we have is uh, this group of sea cans. We have the wire raptor in it, but we have an entrance here and an exit on the other side. We're going to have a lab in there. And when the infantry, assuming this is what the enemy force think they're going to do, is come this way, the lab is going to swing out and throw a uh, wrench in their plans. Now, uh, this hut and the uh, hut over there, these are uh, these are the final objective in this attack. Um, these are basically just simple structures that we built for the enemy. They'll come in, they'll clear the room, render the uh, enemy uh, neutralized, whether that's uh, actually uh, shooting the enemy or taking them captive. And uh, they'll secure this, uh, this hut, and then they'll move on to the next one. Pugsley Wharf isn't the end of the fight. Further down the port, the engineers set up the scene for the final test, an abandoned warehouse full of booby traps. We're in the, uh, we're in the warehouse at the Long Wharf in St. John. Uh, when the infantry come in here, we have, uh, we have a series of doors up on this catwalk here and three doors on the ground level. Once the troops break through the doors, unknown dangers lurk inside. The soldiers must react fast. Nobody will uh, know what's really behind the door till they get in there. Uh, there might be one enemy, there might be you know, five or six, there may be nobody in there. 
And uh, like I said before, the doors are going to be varying degrees of resistance. Some of them will open really easily, some of them you'll need a sledgehammer or some sort of ram to open them up. The one week exercise is almost over. Reservists from Eastern Canada prepare for the grand finale. A double attack on enemy forces. An artillery group is tasked to support the final battle. They need to set up their long range weapons and provide backup for the battle. The reconnaissance team arrives first to make sure the area is safe. They look for the enemy and see no one. They think it's safe to bring in the big guns. The C3 105 millimeter howitzer. This is a long range weapon. It can hit a target 18 kilometers down range. The soldiers do a sweep of the area, looking for bombs or signs of the enemy, and still find nothing. The enemy waits until the soldiers are busy with the guns. They make their move. Contact! Get on the ground! Contact! Get up! The soldiers are caught off guard, but they react fast. Approach the enemy! Contact! Break away! The manhunt begins. They stay low. They don't know how many members of the enemy forces are out there. They've killed one enemy and captured another. The soldiers quickly return to the big guns, but stay in high alert. They have to be ready in case there's another attack. Enemy forces leader, Master Bombardier Trevor Falls is happy with the turnout. I think we were pretty successful. We had them going uh, three different directions and they were pretty confused. It took them, I think 30 minutes. Uh, they were 30 minutes late on their deployment times. And uh, by the time we were all caught and, uh, and uh, set off to the side. Oh, it's always a better lesson when we win, yeah. For one week, reservist soldiers train up to a main event, a large battle, the grand finale of the exercise. What has happened is some infrastructure has fallen in the port facility here, has fallen into hands of belligerents opposing military forces, and the government needs it to function and restore credibility and legitimacy. So we're coming in here and, uh, and retrieving it for them, a raid, which will, uh, which will reveal other intelligence for a subsequent operation. And there'll be uh, more battle procedure and exercising for our soldiers. It's early morning at Pugsley Wharf. The enemy prepares for a long battle. They load up on ammunition. Soon, they will be attacked by hundreds of soldiers. They want to train the soldiers well they plan to put up a good fight. We have uh, C6 rounds, C7 rounds, C9 rounds. Uh, I think we have some T flashes and some smoke grenades. A lot of sound. It's going to be a lot of banging and uh, hopefully a lot of casings flying in the air for me. The enemy forces prepare for the raid. They wait to kill and be killed. I think they're gonna come from right over there. 
most definitely going to come through there and spread out. They're coming through. I picture them flooding through whatever hole they have there. Yeah. Flooding through and, and then, then spreading, spreading out. out. There are three areas where enemy forces use sea cans for cover. An armored vehicle hides in one area. In others, there are hostages. When the soldiers take over the sea cans, the enemy forces who are still alive will retreat back to the wooden huts where they have nowhere to go and must fight to their death. Soldiers surround the wharf. They lay low, keep guard, stay quiet. The enemy is watching. Slowly, with purpose, soldiers creep up and surround the perimeter. The opposition braces for battle. The battle for Pugsley Wharf begins, but the soldiers aim to take back the area from the enemy. It won't be easy. Both sides want to win this fight. I was in the first bunker where they uh, came through. I fired off the first T-flash in the first uh, rounds, and I was more or less stopping them from trying to gain access into the compound. Soldiers throw smoke. It's used in battles to skew the view of the enemy. It allows the soldiers to move forward and gain valuable ground. The soldiers fight through an open battlefield. Some advance while their comrades provide cover fire. Before long, the troops secure their first objective. The soldiers put up a good fight. It's been a busy week with very little sleep, and most are new to the game. Right now I've got, uh, I'd say, close on half of the, uh, the riflemen in my platoon. Uh, just finished the, their DP1 this summer, uh, are fresh off of their, their basic courses, uh, and this is probably the first time that they get to see how the skills they learned this summer actually fit into uh, the larger context of, of, of infantry operations. With combat, there's casualties. A 2 9 2 one confirm. A casualty collection point over. We have a wounded to evacuate over. Soldiers and medics rush to treat the wounded. Never leave a comrade behind. The hostages get an escort to a safe location where they'll be detained and questioned to make sure they're not the enemy in disguise. All three objectives are taken by the soldiers. Firefight pushes the enemy into their final retreat. They're cornered. Victory is near. All right, Charlie, wait. Get your snack up. Put them across here for a support base in that direction. Right. 
After a long battle, only the soldiers are left standing. The troops spend over an hour in an after-action review. They feel pretty good about their efforts in today's battle. I think we did fairly well because last night our bus never came in till three, and we never arrived here till five. So we had zero sleep last night, so I think we did pretty good with the amount of energy we had. It's good, learned a lot of new stuff. They practice their uh, section attack skills and how to uh, do an offensive operation and how to move in on an enemy in, uh, in their proper formats and all their uh, separate drills. I think they did pretty well. I think they'll get some experience from it. They gave up a good fight, but, uh, you know, they didn't last too long. We came through, uh, and uh, the casualties were, were on both sides. Um, but in the end, uh, we were successful in our mission, and we did uh, uh, secure the uh, port facility here. After a short break, the action moves down the wharf. The enemy forces spring back to life for the last battle. We're just going to expend all ammo do what we can to hold them back for as long as we can. And then uh, when they get too close, hopefully if we're still alive, we're gonna withdraw back to uh, our safe house back there. A lot of ammunition, a lot of ammunition. Just continuous fire and hopefully just keep them down and <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> Bombardiers Ryan Mendez and Kevin Griffin feel that this week's training has helped the soldiers. They have to get their mind in that in the right place. If they're going over to Afghanistan, it's not a joke, it's real. So they have to they have to be ready for it. They have to know what to expect and have some sort of they have to practice their tactics. This and they exercise have to for get them is excellent because you can see right off the hop, to start they were absolutely horrible. Taking everything as a joke, laughing at everything, and now they're taking everything really, really serious. Like hustling. Every time we attack them now, they're a lot faster and they are doing a lot better than when we first started. Once the troops annihilate the enemy in the parking lot, they have to clear an abandoned warehouse. It's a house of horrors. We have a series of rooms that are um, alleged uh, holding cells or torture chambers or whatever we want to call them. We have both enemy force located within those rooms, we have hostages located in those rooms, we have real live victims and we have deceased torture victims as well. Every door that they clear, their mind is having to sort out as they go through that door in a nanosecond Threat, non-threat. The soldiers surround the lot. Both sides attack. The troops force the enemy back. They gain valuable ground. The fight is over for the enemy in the parking lot. But for the ones waiting in the warehouse, the games are just beginning. It's the last day of a week-long exercise. These reservist soldiers from Eastern Canada prepare for their final obstacle. They must clear an abandoned warehouse, and they don't know what dangers wait inside. The soldiers check behind the doors. Adrenaline is pumping. In urban battlefields, sometimes what's behind a door will kill you. Sometimes it will scare you. Sometimes there's nothing there.
soldiers searched the warehouse for anything or anyone suspicious. They close in on a mysterious hut and an injured man. Is he really injured or is it a trick? It's mine, it's not yours, it's mine. Go. 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 A suicide bomber hides in the back until the troops get close. At the sight of him, they know they made a big mistake. If this were real, they'd all be dead. They check the area. They don't want to learn the same lesson twice. Sir, we found chemicals in here. We ran into many surprises along the way. Uh, ran into quite a few enemy or above stairs we weren't expecting. Uh, booby traps that uh, took out one of our sections. So uh, yeah, we were into a lot of surprises. It was, uh, it, was, it was really good training, really realistic. It's been a great week. <laughs> we're all just a little tired now. <laughs> Step away from it, get away from it, get away from it. You want cover? Sir, we got body parts here. Really like that. It went well. There are some, obviously some lessons learned. Uh, you're dealing with the soldiers here who are, are continuing their training, so it's not perfect. And right now, in fact, they're all being pulled in. They will be pulled in very shortly and briefed from the section right on up to the company level and go, go through an after action review so that uh, the next time around, they, they do it better. It's been a long week for the part-time soldiers. They are exhausted, but they love their double life. I really like the, the raid we did today, and uh, we went to uh, did some house clearing. It's my first urban ops experience, so I like it. All the exercise is going amazing. I've been here since June 26th, and can't wait to go home, but it's really a, every year it's a good experience. About a year and a half ago, I don't know, my best friend was in it, and it seemed interesting, so I joined. And I was like a year with my unit, and then, uh, well, I'm infantry right now, but I want to switch. Uh, I'm in nursing, so I want to be a nurse officer. I'm just doing this for experience. Personally, I love it. Uh, right now, I'm doing law enforcement in school, so I'm probably going to pursue a career in the military police. But for right now, being a part-time soldier is it's good times. It's a great part-time job, and I've got to do a lot of things that most people just watch on TV. I do enjoy being a reservist, uh, yeah, I, uh, the camaraderie here and the, just the family of, uh, 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 within the military, you know, the military family uh, is something that uh, has been very special in my life for a long time, uh, and I hope to, uh, that it will be uh, in the future for as long as, uh, as it can be. Large annual exercises like Archon are not pre-deployment training. It's about a 14-month commitment for a reservist who volunteers to go overseas including six months of intense full-time training. Right now, 15% of the forces in Afghanistan are reservists. They work side by side with their regular forces comrades and can fill any rank. It's a serious commitment. They leave their families and full-time jobs or studies behind. It's a sacrifice that one day, some will make. Right now, being one year in and not seeing too much like combat, like, you know, much training and all that, I wouldn't, I'd have to say no now. But in a few years, definitely, maybe, I'd probably take it in for consideration. What they're doing now is great for exercise and stuff like that, but maybe in the next few years, think about it. Not every reservist that's recruited into the system will deploy. This is a volunteer army and volunteer activities. Uh, but I know myself, you know, as, as a reservist myself, uh, it would be like 
being a fireman that never goes to a fire. If you're trained up, it's, it's in you to, to do this sort of business. We're, we're professionals, we're part of the full-time uh, professional team that's in the, uh, the, the forces today.